Dyslexia is a very strange condition. It means inability to learn to read. And you might think, surely that can be explained by not having the right home environment, not having the right teacher, not having the right school, or maybe being really very stupid. But none of this applies. There is really a condition that means that you can't learn to read as well, as quickly as you can learn to do all other things. So it's a very specific kind of difficulty, a problem. And what people have always been suspicious about is why should it have to do with reading? I mean, reading, after all, has been invented only about um, 3,000 years ago. And mass literacy hasn't been around for more than possibly a hundred years. Even now there are many people who are not literate. So how can there be a condition uh, based on uh, an ability that must be based in the brain that you know has to do just with reading? Well it turns out that the ability is about something else which affects learning to read. And interestingly it's an ability that has to do with speech. Not language, but speech. And it has to do with a particular possibility of segmenting speech into tiny little sounds that can be matched up to letters. So if you hear the word cat, it's actually one sound. But when you are literate, when you are a person who can spell it seems to you that you can separate cat into k, a, t, but actually you can't put them together and make cat. It's just completely separate. It's a very artificial way of breaking up the sound of speech. So in a, a language that has a writing system that's not based on the alphabet, this problem doesn't arise. So dyslexia is something pretty specific to the alphabet, to the use of the alphabet. And if you have a difficulty in mapping individual speech sounds to letters, you will find it very difficult to learn to read and to spell. It doesn't make sense to you. So when the teacher says to the child, you know, the child is struggling to read and the word is lion. And the teacher might say l, l, to help the child, l, l. The child may suddenly say tiger <laughs> because there's so little relationship to the sound. It gets so little help from this. Another child will maybe use the l to produce the word lion. So it's this difficulty which is at the heart of dyslexia and it's very interesting because it tells us something about how we master speech in general and how it comes that you know 95% of the population has no problem but maybe 5% of the population do have problems and again it can be a spectrum of severe difficulty and very mild difficulty. It means that we do have children who struggle enormously in learning to read and to spell. And they need uh, years and effort and they have to believe very often that they are just very stupid. And which just isn't the case. So it has consequences in real life. Uh, very often consequences that uh, lead to uh, opting out of school altogether, probably behaviour problems, all sorts of things. Now, it turns out that you can understand the brain basis of dyslexia if you look at this difficulty in sound segmentation. And we have developed some tests that get at this difficulty. We call it um, phonology, phonology tests. So this is the particular, the phonemes are these artificial sounds that map onto letters of the alphabet. 
And one test, for example, is um, just repeating back not long, quite complicated nonsense words. Dyslexic people find that very, very hard. They just can't really quite repeat these words. Or we ask for um, the first sound of a word to be split off and transposed. So we have a word pair, for example, lemon basket. And you should transpose the first sound so it becomes Bemen Lasket. And this seems incredibly difficult for a dyslexic person. But then there are others who can do it, but just very slowly. So it's a very sensitive test of this phonological difficulty. And in this way, we could diagnose people who didn't even know they were dyslexic. Even adults who had a dim memory of school and saying, I didn't like it, it was a terrible time. And yeah, I, I was never a good speller and I'll, I couldn't do it very well. And we could find that there is indeed an, an area in the brain. Again, it's not just one area, it's several that are connected with a particular highway in the brain that they have a different kind of activation when they do these tasks, these phonological tasks. And in this uh, sense, um, dyslexia has revealed something not so much about uh, reading and literature, but about speech and how we process it. Spelling is, is a, a, a very interesting activity in English because the way a word sounds and the way it looks can be very disparate from each other. So take the word cough. It's not C-O-F, it's C-O-U-G-H. Now if you're dyslexic, that is a real problem for you to remember. And if you have the sound O-U-G-H, it's not always off. It can be ow sometimes, so the pronunciation can be very, very changeable. And that is why in English, um, in the English language, wherever it is spoken, wherever it is taught, dyslexia will be very prominent. But in languages where the way that the, the writing system is produced so that it is really transparent, and really maps very clearly onto sounds, dyslexia is much less evident. Now, we have done a study of this with Italian speakers. Italian is a beautiful language who has a system that is very, very transparent. If you think of a word like Milano or Salami, um, it is consonant, vowel, consonant, vowel. It is very reasonable and easy to split these up into different uh, phonemes. So even if you have a problem with phonology, even if you are destined to be dyslexic, if you have the good fortune to be born Italian, you will learn to read and to write much more quickly than if you were born into a country where they speak English. Dyslexia, defined as a problem with phonology, is a genetic problem and it's really very strongly heritable. So in Italy we can identify these people just as much even though they have actually very little problem in reading. So some people might say let's not call them dyslexic. Well they are called dyslexic uh, for traditional historical reasons because there is a difficulty in learning to read uh, using the alphabet. And even the Italian children, it turns out, read more slowly, learn more slowly than the non-dyslexic children. So there is an environmental component, a cultural component in the way the problem manifests itself in reading problems. Interesting biological effects which are universal, regardless of language, and there are cultural effects 
which mean there are big differences according to language, whether in fact you have a reading and writing problem.